Hi, my name is Min Shen Peng. Uh, I'm with Warfarin, and um, um, the talk that I will give is labeling and visualization. This talk I will cover um, labeling systems in Warfarin language, and that will include the point, curve, area labelings. So please come to uh, join me. Uh, today I'm going to talk about labeling system uh, in Warfarin language. So, uh, actually, the first line I changed to uh, a word without label. It's kind of dramatic, but I, it's kind of like to show what kind of visualizations, uh, you know, that without labels uh, will feel like because it will be some, uh, it will be lack of the information that you really want to know. And I'll talk about uh, the frameworks that we have in the Wolfram language for the labels. Um, you know, I will go a little bit down to the graphics label to show you what the tools that we have and what's the, the basic stuff that we build upon. And then I will go to the visualizations and uh, you know, the, the functions, the plots and the charts. Um, right, and then there will be different type of implementations in the list plot families and the sample plots, uh, and then charts and more. So uh, just a quick, a quick glance on this uh, plot. It's a James Bond movie. Uh, this is um, the x-axis is the budget, y-axis is the US box office. And um, you know, if you make a report, you don't really want to show the input um, of this graph. Uh, to your audience, you just want to show the, you know, to present a visualizations, and the, you you would hope that this visualization can can be self-contained. Uh, but with this case, without labels, you don't really know what are the points are. So I want to show you later that I'm going to regenerate this example, and with labels. Uh, another example is the Pokemon states. So each point represents a Pokemon, and um, you know the x-axis is speed, y-axis is its weight, um, and the two, hori uh, two lines in the middle are the mean values. Um, it looks interesting, but it would be even better if I can show the labels. And there's, there are about like a thousand points here, so I want to show you that how Wolfram language can generate the labels that will give you enough of information of how it look like. So the frameworks. So on the low level, uh, this is the tools that we build upon. So if you feel you know you want to build your own label system, this will be exactly the tools that I have used. So the first one is the text. Um, you know, text put the expressions and the coordinates and an offset. Here I draw a little diagram here to show you what the offset mean. So if I said that I want to put my label at the label, label position 2, 3, and the label offset is minus 1, minus 1, that means I want to line up this left button corner at the label position. So that's the text in the graphics. Another tool is inset. Inset is slightly complicated, but um, it's much more um, flexible because you can put anything uh, in the first expressions, it can be another graphics, and inset can be put in the graphics 3D as well. Um, but what does um, the syntax of it is like this? So this is my label, which is a graphics, and the red dot here is the object position 0 0.5, 0 0.5. This is the user's coordinates. So you can see this is y and x and y axis both at um, 0.5. So you can put the label at the label position, which is again 2 comma 3. But now I'm aligning this object position, which is the red dot, at that label position. I hope this is clear. Um, so with this information, um, the labels that we implement we implemented in these automatic algorithms uh, actually have eight label positions 
that we put. So that means that we didn't put our labels that, you know, continuously around the point. We only choose eight positions to, um, to locate them. So uh, once you know this, then you will have an idea that when you see the label, you will find uh, the closest point that's according to this system. So this is one, two, three, four positions. The other four is five, six, seven, eight, uh, horizontally and vertically, right? So that's the low-level um, tools that we have, and I have built upon our labeling system. Um, but coming to the functions, that how do you use the um, labels? We can directly, um, uh, you will get the labels automatically um, from the input itself if you use the, the metadata, like, or in this format. So as long as your meta information is matching up the list length of the input uh, in this plot, and then this label, uh, the callouts in this case, will be automatically used. Uh, you can see that I didn't specify any options here. Another case is that if you use in um, associations, uh, the list plot family will also pick it up automatically. Well, in this case, we don't want to be too aggressive, so you do need to put plot labels go to automatic for it to show up. Right. So that's on the input label. Um, another way to do that is to use wrappers. We have labeled wrapper and callout wrapper. Um, right. By the way, this labeled is the same um, is the same syntax that the front end labeled is using. So they are all unified. Um, but here, this diagram I showed is from the documentation of callout. Um, callout has a great fe um, flexibility, and here is to show you what all the positions um, in the syntax means. So the position in the callout actually means this turning point, or we call it um, uh, the label location, actually. And then there is an anchor position, which is connecting to um, you know, the main object that you want to label to. In the position here, just like inset, you can also specify which part of this callout label you want this neck to connect to. And that system is illustrated here. Uh, the left bottom corner is zero, zero. The, right, uh, the top right corner is one, one. So here, I want to show you that I put the call out and, um, right, so this is a label. And the position I set to automatic the anchor position is automatic. In this case, in the plot, it will be put on the right-hand side um, um, as a callout. So if I say that I want the position to be at 10, well, let's start from 10. So um, it will find the y positions of the function. So you only need to specify the x position and the y position will be uh, found automatically. But in this case, it doesn't look nice because it's colliding with the axis. So you can say that I want it to be like that. So this is still automatic because you didn't automatically down because you didn't specify any y positions. You are just saying that I want to be above. Above what? It's above the function. Um, of course, you can specify um, Something like that. Um, right. You can specify um, the positions. Uh, this is, looks like it is sticking with that. So, but if you put it away, then uh, the anchor point will be found automatically. But you, you can also specify the anchor point specifically. Right. Again, you don't need to specify it x and y, you only need to specify the x and y will be found for the anchor point. 
So I'm going to, down to this detail and just to show you that how flexible it is. In the end, you can specify tons of options and positions very specifically, but I, I have to say that's not so different from just using the epilogue with text. So um, I hope that the default um, behavior that we have found will fit most of the cases that, that you will need. So, and I will see more, I will show you more cases later. So here is an example that I copied from the, um, our documentation before the labeling system uh, was implemented. So in this case, uh, the, de the developer want to label these two points. So they wrote a function that, um, that's crafting the labels here and using the epilogue to put the labels here. Right. So I'm gonna show you that how we can do that just using the labeled wrapper. So then you don't need uh, that label anymore. This is just the points, two points. And you, I put the first label, a second label, and the first label at x equal to one, second label at equal, x equal to two. So that's, that's all it, need, it needs. Or you can use the callout. Here I use a slightly complicated um, position syntax. Uh, to position this color label. So that's the wrappers. So we have the data, we have the wrappers. We can also use the options to specify labels. So for the plot uh, and its family, you can specify plot labels go to expressions, and it's actually the same behavior of automatic. Then uh, the labels will use, will pick up the expressions you can specify, uh, so in this case, because there are two label, two functions, so I specify the two uh, positions and they can be scaled. That's the scaled position of the, the curvatures. Right. And um, this is an example to, uh, um, interactive manipulate to show you how you can customize the look of the callout. Um, the syntax is like this. This is almost all the options that callout supports. Um, here, there is something called the leader length, uh, leader size. So here, you can extend the leader and the neck, and also the gap between uh, the anchor point and the position you want to label. You can rotate it. Oh, let me make it longer. And you can change the rounding radius and the frame margin, change in the background. Um, right, so something is the neck angle that we have designed if you make it automatic, it's going to always be horizontal. But if it, if it is set, then this is going to be any position or any angles. Um, another thing is the appearance. This is a super option that will give you uh, different feel. Well, let me fix this, yes. So this is a balloon. Uh, some appearance will disable some options because they, doesn't make, they don't make sense for some appearance. And there are, for example, like marker. Oh, this one does make sense. But <laughs> so let me go back to the frame. So that circle, you know, just to give you a flavor that how rich this can be. And here is a gallery of the color labels uh, we generated for the marketing page. Right. Okay, so now I'm going to, going to talk about the different implementations uh, in various plots. Uh, the first one is the plot family. Um, the use case in here is the multiple curves. So um, the thing I want to point out is that um, we have very various labeling uh, positions that you can use. 
but it will really depend on the applications. So I will just to show you, you know, a gallery of them. So I hope that you will find something useful for your application. So this, the first one is the multiple curves. Sometimes you do have lots of curves in the plot, and um, it's um, the labels which is done here is going to avoid colliding to each other by using fine minimum. And all you need to do is specify plot labels go to automatic. You can also specify the position of it. And this position, it is a named position, which is automatically um, chosen the actual positions for you. Um, so in this case, this is above. This is above the overall curve. Um, this is scaled 85%. You can also do multiple labels. Um, they do need to match up, though. So here is that I have two labels here, and um, I have two set of positions. This is the first one, and this is the second one. Um, this absolute x. And the other one is the minus absolute x. You can also use labeling to label a feature in this example is the exclusions. So this is um, right. This is um, using the call out wrappers on the input. Right. I will leave that more for you to explore. So uh, like I said, that was just examples on the plot. It can work on the log plot, log log plot, and if you specify scaling functions on the plot, it will just work fine. Um, on the list plot families, there are similar behavior um, for this case because it does look like a line, well, because it's connected. Um, in this case, we put the labels also on the right-hand side. Well, but the automatic ticks is not going to show you anything because there is no expression there. And this is where we come to the interesting cases, uh, cases that that is when the input data is actually points, and you want to label the each point. So how do we handle this case? Uh, we use our, the, we, the, the algorithm we use um, is something called the point feature labeling problem. So we try to find uh, the positions for each point so that the labels can avoid, in, uh, can avoid the, co um, the collisions into each other and also the points. So, we get lucky that in this case there is no uh, too dense the area, so we need to drop the label. But it is possible when you um, have very dense the points cluster, there's just no position for some points that you can find um, you know, a location to put the label that it doesn't collide. In that case, we will just drop the label and provide the tool tip for you. Right, so this is the example I showed in the first uh, slide which uh, is the James Bond movie. So it gives you more context um, in the plot itself. You don't need to you know, show the input because sometimes the input can be a little bit intimidating. But I hope it is not to you because I'm simply just using the call out on the data itself. It doesn't really need to use this pure function, but you know, using entities and a list of the um, properties is just fetching the data much faster. Right. I want to show you that I don't really need to just use the string. I can use the images of it. And uh, well, string, image, graphics, um, anything, we will find the size of it and we will run into the algorithm to avoid the, the, the collisions. So it's the same thing. Yeah, this case is the Pokemon states. Uh, this is the example I said about there's too much points, too many points in a dense area that there's no position I can put the labels without colliding. But the labels that I put there don't collide each other. So that's the point. <laughs> and um, here I even used the tool tip um, on each point. So you can see you know, the Pokemon character there. 
uh, without the labels and all these um, tooltip, this plot is probably, you know, you probably would take two seconds to, to, to look at it. But with more context and, you know, labels here, this plot becomes an exploration tool. Right. Uh, charts, we have supported labels in charts from version 7 when the charts were created. Uh, we had the chart labels. Um, chart labels using the callout is something that we, supports, we supported since version 11, I think. And the first thing that we supported uh, is on the bar chart. Um, so in this case, that there are quite some amount of the data, and we really want to show the labels. Um, previously, you know, people are putting the labels on the axis, then they rotated. So it is vertical. So it is you know, lying you know, lying down on the axis uh, vertically. So you have to like rotate your head to see it. But now you can just use the call out and then it will automatically put the labels on top of it and then in a nice uh, format. This looks like the timeline plot uh, is a sim similar fashion. We can spike it up. We put the scaling function and we rescale the size of the labels to emphasize which company has higher GDP. So this make it much easier to read. This may not be the best example to put in the pie chart, but I'm just to show you that what does the pie chart do if I just put the same data straight in. So this is the result. Um, at the first glance, it probably is not so Im impressive, but if you took a closer uh, look, you will see all the labels are not colliding each other and they are um, avoiding uh, by using the high minimum again. So this is some features that a lot of customers have asked. So here it is. Right, the last example is to use, I wanted to show the bubble chart, but I saw that you know, using the geo bubble chart is more impressive and the same purpose. So here is some, um, the petroleum production in the world and I cut it, um, I only showed the first 25%, which is still a lot. Um, right, and this is the result, which is a geobubble chart, and um, they are, the size of the labels is relative to the amount of petroleum the country produce, and um, the labels are the country names. Um, there are some cases like these two bubbles, they are, they are um, in a very dense area, so we couldn't find the labels to put them without introducing any ambiguity. So that's, how, that's why we didn't put the labels there. But right, as long as there is a position that we can put the label without making it ambiguous, then we will do. So. So that's the, the fancy example I showed you here. That will conclude my talk. Thank you very much.